welcome to World War G. I'm Troy. Oh, Troy's a part of this. What a jerk. I'm AJ. Your name is just letters. You suck, AJ. Okay. Um, we're doing a uh, recording on a Tuesday because Sunday was not good for me. <laughs> Actually, the last few days have not been great for me. Because I'm old. I'm an old man. I have a bad back and everything's terrible. Damn kids, get off my yard. You know, it's funny. I was actually talking to my mom and my niece about this. And before modern medicine came around, right, people only lived to about 40, 50 years old. Yeah. So it makes sense that when you reach about 40, your body starts to, like, break down. <laughs> because naturally, that's, that's when we should be, like, dying. That's a good point. Well, what about you hear all these people, like, biblically... Uh, you know, or like even in history that live like crazy long times. That's just flukes. Well, I mean, is first of all, it's the Bible, so that's <laughs> bullshit. But <laughs> I mean, there were people like back in ancient Greece and stuff that lived to be 70, 80 years old. Right. So, I mean, yeah. It, it's like when people now reach like age 111 or something. Like it happens, but not very know, often. Not very often. I definitely feel it's quality over quantity, mm. you know, like if I go out at 60, huh, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be all right with that. <laughs> 64. That's the, that's, just take a long car ride. Well, you know, the, the Beatles say, will he still need me? Will he still feed me when I'm 64? Right. So play that song. Just go all Groundhog's Day. Boom. Yep. Right off the cliff. <laughs> Thelma and Louisa, yeah. right off the cliff. <laughs> I actually saw an article. Our last words will be for the podcast. Right? For the podcast! <laughs> that we're still doing when we're 64. <laughs> of course. Right. We reach show like 3,000 and something. <clears throat> like, take that, Simpsons. <laughs> I actually saw an article speaking of the Beatles that uh, Paul McCartney is no longer signing autographs anymore. Seriously? Yeah. You know? COVID reasons? Or no, just he just, he's arthritis? just, he's just done. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. He's been he's been signing autographs for fifty plus years, right? You know, yeah. I'm I'm done. Yeah. Wow. But now he's like, I mean, the article is saying it's. He says that it's such a mundane like thing. Like, oh, you want me to write my name on something? Like, what's the point? When instead, he'd just rather talk to people, right? Have kind of an interaction with them, yeah, conversation. Right. I like that. That's um it was interesting. I also saw something where Will Smith was saying, Hey, I typically I did my signature like from this year to this year, like this, and then from this like you know, from like two thousand to two thousand ten I did my signature like this. He changes it up every ten years. Yeah, so, I wonder if that's so people can't copy it. Um that and he was saying it's kinda cool to see like when you'll see signed merchandise, what decade it was oh, from. Oh gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. He's like, yeah, well, I just went with Will, and now I kind of, like, fancy it up a little bit. Yeah. Switches it. I've never signed my autograph for anybody. I don't think I have either. Just once. Just once in my life. Once somebody... Not even, like, on a commission? Artwork? I mean, yeah, I've done that, but I mean, that's... Well, there you go. That's, Boom. Yeah, but that's not Now you can same. die happy. That's yeah. not the same. <laughs> They didn't technically ask for my autograph. I put it in there because I always sign all my artwork. But right then, like, will you please sign this? No, it was just something I did of my own accord. But ha, take it or leave it. That's right. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's get into it with Happy Birth Death Day. Ah, yeah. This is a segment where we celebrate those people of note that were born and also died on this day. And it's also fun to see if AJ will know who the hell these people are. <laughs> because unless it has to do with the Minnesota Vikings or video games, AJ doesn't give a shit. Exactly. Those are my <laughs> only two, two loves. <laughs> and girls. Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, born on this day in 1845, C.W. Post. See, I'm thinking post cereal, but then You'd I'm all be correct, right? Yes. Oh hell yeah, that's the guy. CW Post um, created post cereal. Actually, got the idea from uh, the Kellogg brothers. 
Really? Mm hmm And they had the idea from the General Mills brothers, <laughs> <laughs> sisters, I don't know. Now, they, if you actually follow me on TikTok, I talked about the Kellogg's brothers and where their whole cornflake thing came from. Um, also born on this day in 1946, Pat Sajak. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, he is a television host? He is. Booyah! Two for two, bitches! <laughs> Extra points if you know what game show he hosts. Uh, uh... Yeah, no, I, I was, I'd throw, I'd throw out Jeopardy, but I don't know. No. 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 Match game? No. Price is right? No. Dig in the hole. <laughs> You're getting closer. <laughs> So close. Uh, that's right. Uh, it's like they came on right after Wheel other. of Fortune. There you go. Oh, okay. Yep. Wheel of Fortune. By the way, how easy of a job does Vanna White have? The easiest. The easiest job in television. Yeah, right? absolutely. And she made <clears throat> bank. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just walking up and down, looking pretty, pressing the board. <laughs> I could do that. Done. Like they even light up for her. Yeah, right? it's not that complicated. She doesn't even have to like look; it's just oh, that one. She she have to remember where they were, you know, nothing like that. It's just ding, ding. So walk to the other side. Ding. ding. Walk to the other side. Ding. Walk. Million dollars. An episode? I don't know what she makes. Uh. Um. Also born on this day, nineteen forty-seven, Hillary Clinton. Sounds vaguely familiar. Mm, yeah. 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 Wasn't there a scandal or something? <laughs> <laughs> been a couple. Um, born on the state in 1956, Rita Wilson. I wouldn't be too surprised if you don't know. That sounds really familiar, but I can't think of who it is. You probably know her husband pretty well, Mr. Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Rita Wilson, who is an actress in her own right. Um, <clears throat> the first one to get COVID in the States. <laughs> first big one. First one, celebrities, yeah. 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 Um, also born on this day, 1962. Does she do much acting or stuff? Or She's she done does... a lot of acting, yeah. Okay. It's mostly TV, though. Uh -huh. And she'll always, she'll pop up on a guest star with, like, if if Tom Hanks is doing a movie. Like, she was in that thing you do, <clears throat> but in a little guest role, but. Um, born on this day, 1962, Carrie Elwes. Why does that name sound so familiar? Elwes. Elwes. Because he's a celebrity. An actor? Yes. Can't think of the movies. Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. He was Wesley in The Princess Bride. Born on this day in 1967, Keith Urban. The country star? Yep. Yeah. From New Zealand. That's... And all that a Kiwi singing <laughs> country songs. Sorry, Mike. Hard again if you're listening. <laughs> Who actually is from New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kiwis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we like you. Yeah. I wonder if New Zealanders like that nickname. They Kiwis. do not. Do they I, not? I, I game with a couple of them, oh. and they do not like that at all. Sorry again, Mike. <laughs> what, what would be the equivalent for, for us Americans? What would you call us? <laughs> rednecks rednecks perhaps yeah that's kind of like yeah, gotta be the closest yeah. okay there's sound like it's not horrible it's not awful but it's not something that you'd be like oh yeah i'm a redneck right 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 cowboy maybe like oh you're from america so you must be a cowboy yeah perhaps yeah. uh yeah let us know mike what's the equivalent yeah, what's the equivalent to a kiwi um, also born on this day in 1973, Seth MacFarlane. I do know this actor, comedian. Popular for creating what show? Family Guy. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, I still like Orville. It's, Orville's good. It, yeah. But I haven't seen any new episodes. I haven't watched it in a while, but yeah. yeah. I don't like... <clears throat> I don't much care for his other movies like A Thousand Ways to Die in the West. That been That's great. Kind of trash. No. No. Ted was good. Mm hmm Ted was all right. The, Ted 2 wasn't very good. No. The But Ted, the first one was really pretty funny. There were some really funny lines mm -hmm. in it. Even though uh, Ted just sounded like Peter Griffin. Yeah. Not doing a different voice. He's actually voiced. Yeah. Yeah. 
He does Brian. He does quite a few other voices as does well. Stewie, Quagmire. That's the way to do it, dude. Like, become a voice... Well, if you want to become a voice actor, just... Create my own cartoon? Yeah. Yeah. And then you get those roles. <clears throat> yeah, it's sure. It's a lot of work, and I'm just not motivated enough. <laughs> Ugh. Um, also born on this day, last one from 1977, John Heater. Not ringing a bell. Popular for one role, which was Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Blades of Glory. Yeah, that's and true. But what's I mean, the, what's the baseball? The bench warmers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what's the baseball movie? Yeah, exactly. I've actually bench warmers. Boom. Yeah, it was bench warmers. I've actually sat in the diner from Napoleon Dynamite. Really? Yeah. Because it's was just it in, on one of your road trips. No, it was, I was dating a girl who lived up that way. Right. And I think it was, it's like in Smithfield or Smithville or Smith, whatever it is out there. Well, yeah. Smith or something. Smith something. <laughs> yeah. Did you order anything? I don't remember what I had. Actually, I don't remember if we actually ate there. Maybe we just passed it. I don't know. <laughs> there it is. Maybe oh, I'm having a Mandela right. effect. I'm not sure. Possibly. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's move on to the people who died this day. I'm not expecting you to know these people. Neither am I. Great. That makes two of us. <laughs> Killed in this day on 1864 by the Union troops, Bloody Bill Anderson. That's a badass nickname. Right. But I don't know who it is. Yeah. He was a Confederate soldier. And how big of an asshole do you have to be as a Confederate soldier to have the nickname Bloody Bill Anderson? <laughs> Kill a lot of people or uh, yeah. be a bloody yeah. bastard. Um, also killed on this day. <sighs> Sometimes it's not just the people, but it's a, like a whole like event that happened. Kill on this day. Uh, Frank... And Tom McClary, Billy Clayton, were killed by Doc Holliday, Wyatt Virgil, and Morgan Earp at the OK Corral. Dang. In Tombstone, Arizona. That's a pretty significant thing. It happened on this day, October 26th. Really? 1888. Yep. Or, excuse me, 1881. Now, I do know quite a few of those outlaws, and I have seen the movie Tombstone. Yeah, <laughs> not, not extremely historically accurate, but you know. Right. It's Hollywood. We got <laughs> And the next time I have like three days off of work, I'm driving down to Tombstone. Really? Yes. Yeah. It's like a 13 hour drive, but yeah. That'd be way cool. I think that'd be cool. Go, go visit, take some cool pictures. Yeah, go visit the OK Corral. Stay there in Tombstone. I think that'd be cool. Um, Also died this day, Hattie McDaniel. Again, uh, I'm not expecting you to know who this is. She played Mammy in Gone with the Wind. Oh. Significant okay. because she was the first African-American actress to ever win an Oscar. Really? Mm -hmm. For that role? Yes. Okay. Died on this day of breast cancer in 1952 at the age of 57. Ooh. Yeah. Sad thing about that was wow. when she won her Oscar, she wasn't even allowed like in the building. Nah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Wow. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's messed up. You can receive your Oscar around back. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fairly accurate. Damn, that's that's fucked up. So way to go, Hollywood. Good job. All right, that was happy birthday. Day. Let's get to this week in geek. This week in geek. So, right off the bat, history of the world. I love the movie. It's so damn quotable. It's a lot of fun. Um, one, like I, that was one of my first movies that I watched with like my um, mom and grandparents, yeah. and we just like like laughed the whole way through. I haven't um, seen it. Really? Mm -mm. And I love Mel Brooks, but for some reason I just haven't. Right. Seen that one. Uh, it's very quotable. Well, they are in talks 
uh, to do a sequel, to finally get a part two, because that was the whole, like, one of the biggest jokes in the whole thing was it was only part one. Yeah, they're going through history. Mel Brooks is playing these different characters. Mm -hmm. He's playing the king. He's playing, like, all these other guys. Um, But they'd always talked about doing a part two. Well, it's actually coming to fruition. They have yet to say, like, have a release date on it just yet. But just to know that it's in the works fills my heart. <laughs> <laughs> fills your heart with joy, huh? Yeah. You need to get around. That's one of the ones you need to see, Troy. Oh, sure. yeah. All right. Put it on your list. All right. It's great. And then we're going to see the film was made up of segments uh, set during world history, among the Stone Age, Ancient Rome, French Revolution. Oh, that was what, like, you'd really appreciate one of the gags that they do during the, um, he goes on, he's playing Moses mm-hmm. and he goes up there and he's just like, I present and give you the 15. And then he drops one of the tablets and tsh, the 10 commandments. And it's so damn sacrilegious, but it's, it's hilarious the whole way through. All right. And he's involved, isn't he? Mel Brooks? He is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, isn't he Whether like... it's going to be an executive producer or whether he's going to actually be playing a role, they haven't really said. But I do hope that he does kind of do something. I have a part in there. Isn't he sure. like 120 or something? He is up there. I think, I think he's like 90-something. I mean, I joke, but he's like 93 or 94 or 92, something like that. Let's see. He's early 90s, is what I'm saying. 95. 95, okay, never mind, he's mid 90s. Damn. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's an old Jewish man. We're, we're looking at some of his pictures and stuff, yeah. yeah. Well, good on him, still yeah. going strong. Yeah. I think those are his original teeth, too. <laughs> Could be. He'll be 96 when it comes out. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, the, that it'll be kind of difficult to do, and I hope that they don't shy away from some of the jokes just because everybody's super PC. It's it's Mel Brooks. I don't think he's going to care so much about that. No. <laughs> uh, fuck it. Like Mel Brooks, <laughs> one, has never cared, and two, he's 95. Like, right. Mix those two things together, and you've got a, yeah. a hit on your hands. I mean, he's a Jewish man who's been making, you know, Nazi jokes since the 50s. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mel Brooks doesn't give a shit. Um, so this is a story that will not go away. Uh, Superman's bisexuality leads to big sales for DC Comics. Um, after revealing that the new Superman, John Ken, is bisexual, which we've covered. Uh, DC Comics reports that Superman Son of Kal-El number 5 has sold more copies than its debut. Um, After us reporting on it, right? Right, right. Yeah. Where, yeah. You're welcome. You gave us the, DC. We gave it the World War G boost. DC Comics recently confirmed that Jonathan Kent is bisexual. You know, got that. Uh, do you think this has something to do with, like, a lot of the times it's difficult to know what comic book is really going to be worth a lot of money down the road. Right. Um, but sometimes you can kind of like tell where it's like one of those bigger issues where it's just like Superman beats down some Nazis. You're mm-hmm. like, that's probably going to like do pretty well down the road. Um, do you think that's the case with this one? No. No. Um, it's more so because of the content and them actually like Wanting a piece of history? Yeah, I, I think because it's generating so much buzz right. that people are ordering this. Um, my, the one, not problem, the one downside to this is as a collector, I would, <clears throat> I hate getting second runs on yeah, comics. Same. Right? That, that just kind of like bugs me. It's just like, well, it's not really the same. We're like, oh yeah, we got a second, you know, a second run of this. Right. I'm like. Mm, I'll, I'll I'll pass. Yeah, once it's the second, third, fourth run, like it's not as mm, yeah, it's not as special, right? But from what they're saying, um, the publisher is not releasing any specific numbers for orders. However, it truly would be unprecedented for the fifth issue of a series to outperform sales of the series inaugural issue. Damn. Yeah. So be it'll be interesting. 
Speaking of big bucks and collector's items, so just a couple of days ago, Tom Brady and the Bucks were beating the hell out of the Bears, which is great, and I know you won't care, but they're part of the same division that the Vikings are, the NFC North. So it was good to see them get the crap beat out of them because then that means it's a higher seat for the Vikings. Not saying I, I'm, I'm just saying right now my brain is just going. Boo. <laughs> well, so <laughs> Tom Brady threw his 600th touchdown career touchdown pass, which is a pretty damn impressive feat. You know, it's it's a mile marker for sure because not many, if any, quarterbacks have done that in their career. Mm -hmm. um, so the dude that receives it, he grabbed it and then went back, picked it up, and was just like all excited and yeah, cheering. And I don't know if he had a brain fart or what his issue was, but he jumped up into the crowd and gave it to a dude that has the same jersey, number 13, as he did. Mm -hmm. Like hands it to him right. and he's like all happy and shit. And then he sits down. One of the other coaches comes over to him, like says something to him. And then he like, you see it, like it's an audible, like, oh crap what did i do um, <laughs> damn it i'm um, uh shoot I, he didn't realize how significant of a touchdown that was right, right. for him uh so the like somebody else like one of the staff members went over to the fan and said like hey um can we get that football back you know uh if it's not too much trouble they ended up giving him a thousand dollars towards merchandise there at the stadium and another football Turns out, though, like because they were asking some of the announcers and some of the other people, and they're saying, "Yeah, dude, that ball is worth uh, five hundred thousand dollars plus." And then he's like, "Probably closer to seven hundred and fifty thousand." Right. Fuck. That's a damn. And you I would have said, "Nope." Yep. It's I don't mine. care if I get booed. Like people are pissed off at me. It's like whatever. Like I don't care. I'm keeping the damn football. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that that sucks. They, I feel like, first off, I wouldn't have given the football back and be like, all right, fine, whatever. And they interviewed him, so he got his, like, 15 minutes of fame because right. they were talking to him. And he's just like, you know, it's Tom Brady. Like, how could I say no to that? Ha, 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 laughing about yeah, that. I'm like, yeah. that's a shit ton of money, dude. <laughs> like, And $1,000 worth of merchandise? Ugh. Yeah. whoop do you do So you can't even, like, spend the money elsewhere? You have to spend it on their... Mm -hmm stuff yeah <laughs> damn that's that's rough no i would have absolutely yep like, that nope, ball. It's like, mine. Nope. have him grab one of those other deflated footballs he's got over right. there. <laughs> i got that joke oh, i thanks. got that reference <laughs> but yeah i don't think i would have um are there any instances where you would have like handed not back to the player but like say you're at a baseball game you dive in front of this little kid and grab it and then get would you give it to the kid or you're yeah. still keeping it yeah no I'd, I'd give it to the kid even so. if it's like the hundredth career or something or other or some mm -hmm. sort of significant ball yeah yeah because i mean is that to help save face so you don't look like an ass or? well it's just because i don't care that much about sports so it wouldn't be that you even know. if the ball ends up being worth half a million well yeah then i'd be <laughs> Upset, but mm, it's yeah, okay. yeah. No, just knowing me, and my personality, I'd, I'd, I'd give it to the kid. Oh, sorry, I didn't even see you back there. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yoink. <laughs> that is crazy, though. That's that's an expensive football. I kind of hope that they at least go back and do something for him. Um, give him something, right? Because that's just lame. And knowing football fans, if he didn't give the football back, you probably would have been, like, jumped after the game or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I would have right, probably left the game right then and there. I mean, the team, you know, it ended up being 38-3. to three. Mm -hmm. So, I would have grabbed the ball. They're like, nope, sorry, ha, ha, ha. People are like, boo, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. like, fuck you. <laughs> Flip them off. Walk out. <laughs> I don't care. Because football fans, by and large, are aggro dicks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You get into that whole crowd mentality, yeah. and then they just become bigger dicks. At least it's not like in the Raiders stadium, you know? Oh, if it was a Raiders stadium, he would have been shot. Probably. 
<laughs> Those fans are crazy. We, I think we talked about it one time that that is the fan base that sells the most alcohol right. every single year. Um, it was pretty close up there with like uh, now LA with how much alcohol mm -hmm. consumed during a football game. But yeah, the Raiders still hold that number one spot. So not only are they like drunken, you know, people, yeah. but the thugs. <laughs> yeah, all Raider fans are thugs. Uh, at least growing up, that was kind of my, I know that's a bad stereotype, but that's what I always got from them. You know, like every other team, um, they had their fans that were kind of crazy over the top, and I hated Packer fans, but that's just because I'm a Vikings fan, and we talked about this before. But all the Raider fans I knew, they were just like punk ass kids in my so like mm -hmm. going to, in high school. They wear a Raider jersey, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dick. Like that. they were the quote unquote bad kids. Yeah, always yeah. in getting detention, slough mm -hmm. in school, you know. And the jocks were always wearing Packers or Cowboys, right? Stuff and yeah, jumping on the bandwagon. Jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> but the thugs, they, they were yeah. For some reason, they were always Raider fans. But you know, I don't know. I have no dog in this fight. I'm not Michael Vick. <laughs> oh. See what I did there? Yeah, oh, that was a good one. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> Troy's making uh, sports puns. Yeah. Like, what is the podcast it's coming to? It's a football joke. Yeah, hell's about to freeze over. <sighs> well, if you think you're having a bad week, <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing on Alec Baldwin. Because uh, last week, Alec Baldwin killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Alec Baldwin straight up killed somebody. Uh, he was apparently on the set of his new movie, Rust. And he fired a prop gun while filming a scene in New Mexico, causing the death of cinematographer uh, Helena Hutchins and wounding director Joel Sousa. That's crazy. In one shot. No. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't die there because they rushed her to the hospital and she died yeah. on the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hutchins, 42, like I said, was transported by helicopter to University of New Mexico Hospital in Albuquerque where she died. Souza, 48, or Souza, was taken by ambulance to Christus St. Vincent in Santa Fe where he received emergency treatment for his injuries. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff's office said in a statement that Hutchins and Souza, quote, were shot when a prop firearm was discharged by Alec Baldwin, 68. So, here's the thing. Now, no files have been, I mean, no charges have been filed. It was clearly an accident, you know. Yeah. It's not like Baldwin's going to jail or anything, but here's the thing. A lot of people in Hollywood have been commenting about this and saying that this is very weird. Right. Because what happens is, and I've, I've been doing some research, when you're rehearsing scenes that have to do with a gun, when you're rehearsing it, you don't even have a gun. You have a completely, like, a toy or something like that. Yeah. Then, when you actually shoot the scene, you have a guy who's in charge of firearms who, when they come on set, they yell, hot set, right? Right. Give the actors the guns, they film their scene, and immediately, those guns are taken away. Immediately. Right. As soon as they yell, cut. So the fact that Alec Baldwin had this gun still, and discharged it, it's, it's a little weird. Like, ah. people are, are saying that there, there was negligence on this set. Like, it right. shouldn't have happened. Hmm. Uh, on his behalf, or do you think the actual, like, the set itself, or where does the fault lie? I think both. Because it, it, it is an independent film. Right. So, you and know. It looks like it's pretty got a pretty decent, like, cast. Yeah. Yeah. It has a decent cast. Absolutely. Um, but, I think, yeah, because it is an independent film, I don't think, you know, they have... You know, there's not that level of professionalism, say if it was a movie from Warner Brothers or, you know, something like that. One of these bigger studios. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's 
Alec Baldwin, you know, he's such a big star. Maybe the director might have been intimidated or, you know, maybe Alec was goofing around or, you know, something like that. Who knows? Right. He's not, oh, I think I'll just keep it, you know, just like, just in case yeah, I mean, you guys get out of hand. Yeah, kind of a yeah, deal. Exactly. Ha, 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 blam, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, but they have fired like so many guns and how many movies have come out where they've used, you oh, know, hundreds, guns. Hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. And then to have this happen. Yeah. But it seems weird. Yeah. Like, was there a malicious intent with the person? No. Like when they're filling up those guns? Well, even uh, guns that fire blanks, they, from what I've read, there still is a little. They discharge. They some, do discharge something. something. Yes, right. Um, Whether it's scraps of like paper or yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, there is something that exits the the barrel. Um, so even something like that, you know, like even if the barrel is like really old and they've used that prop gun hundreds of times and then like a flake of metal or something comes off of it. Exactly. Right. Like you just, you never know. Yeah. Which is why people are saying that this is such a, it's a weird thing. Like this just shouldn't have happened. Right. Like if, if all the safety measures and precautions, uh, were in place, this never should have happened. Do you think also because it was like in Mexico where their standards, I don't know, it seems like not that you can get away with more well, stuff. In, it was but, in New Mexico. Oh, it was in New Mexico. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Huh. Then, yeah, you'd think it, they'd have quite a few restrictions and things in place. I don't know, but that's, that sucks. Yeah. This, uh, there's an article you can click on here that says Alec Baldwin was told prop gun was safe before fatal shooting. So I don't know. I probably in the upcoming weeks, we'll probably hear more about what happened. I'm sure Alec Baldwin eventually will do interviews about what happened. I know he's already released. I think on Instagram, <coughs> he's released a statement. He has of some sorts. I haven't, have you had a chance to check it out or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he said, hang on, let me pull it up real quick. Because as soon as I originally read the or heard about what happened, I immediately went to Instagram to see. Because he's on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, this is what he said. Um, there are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic incident that took the life of uh, Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours. I'm fully cooperating with the police investigation to address how this tragedy occurred, and I am in touch with her husband, offering my support to find, offering my support to him and his family. My heart is broken for her husband, their son, and all who knew and loved Helena. Uh, and he hasn't. Like that was just a day since. or two, right? Yeah, it was just Thursday. Yeah. No, that he released it like right after. It was mm -hmm. pretty quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <sighs> Man, that, that yeah. would be rough. Suck. And, and imagine the emotional toll that would, take, that would take on you. Right. How much that would weigh on your mind. Even though it was an accident. Yeah. Still, you killed somebody. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine. Was it while they were recording? I don't know. I wonder if there's going to be, like, I know this is kind of horrific, but, like, if there, and maybe morbid, but, like, if there was any footage that they have of this right, incident. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, I think in the upcoming months or weeks, we'll probably hear more. And uh, I don't more. think it'll just, like, hushed under the... I think right now everybody's, you know, out of respect. Right. Is, is kind of keeping it low key and, and not going to the press or anything. But I think eventually stuff's going to start to come out. And we'll right. That's how it happened. I mean, like the guy, remember this happened on the set of The Crow, right? With Brandon Lee. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Prop gun misfired. He got shot. He died. The guy, the actor who shot him, um, to this day says that still haunts him. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had a lot of mental issues for years after that happened, Ugh. you know, think we'll ever see him like hold a gun or is he going to finish the movie? Is he, 
I I imagine they'll probably finish. Right. Um. It'll it'll, it'll be a while. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I my guess would be that they'll finish. I also think I know that this is a really tragic event, but I do think that this movie for you know will do really well. Just out of people's curiosity. Yeah. 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 Probably. It's like, oh, this was the movie that Alec Baldwin killed somebody. So yeah. See it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird, but I can totally see that movie, like you know, doing super well, mm-hmm. uh, ex- surpassing expectations. Right. Sure. Right. Right. Um, another actor that is in the news, Ryan Gosling, is going to be set to play because, like. Since this article came out, initially it was just rumored that he was the front runner to play Ken in this upcoming Barbie movie mm-hmm. starring Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. But now it's been more confirmed that he is going to be playing Ken. Um, but it'll be really interesting because the director, um, Greta Gerwig, um, Gerwig mm-hmm. she is the one, she did Lady Bird and she's done a couple other like movies as well. Right. Um, but she's always got a different, like, interesting style. So I don't feel like this is going to be a typical kind of Barbie, m- <laughs> happy-go-lucky kind of a movie. No, I I don't think so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't imagine it's going to be like, you know, like a Disney Channel film where the, the Barbie comes to life and right. you know, stuff like that. I think maybe this will be more about the girl that was that actually inspired inspired Barbie and kind of like the ramifications from that, whether she was like, yeah. you know, the paparazzi and everybody looking for her, you know, talking to her, interviewing her and also her having to keep her body weight to a certain and yeah. her specs basically. Yeah. Cause I, I know the, the kids that were, um, they weren't the the dolls weren't modeled after them, but there really was an actual Barbie and Ken. They were the kids of the creator of the doll, and they hated it. Really they hated it. Oh, yeah. uh, similar to like the kid that was inspired for Christopher Robin. Yeah, right. These people that uh, like they become celebrities. And mm-hmm. they didn't want to be in the limelight. Yeah. You know, it's one thing if you choose that profession, you're like, yeah, I want to become an actor. Yeah, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing if you're not even like in that right mindset. It's like, oh, yeah, I based it off of this kid. And then all of a sudden he becomes a star overnight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the other film that I was thinking of. Little Women. Um, yes. Was- she she directs very um, female-centered movies. Mm-hmm. Very, uh, have kind of a feminist bent to them uh jackie uh no strings attached yeah yeah so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what she she does with it right at like at first take i'm like oh they're making a barbie movie i was just kind of like uh margot robbie i don't know like i'd be i was on the fence yeah i mean if anybody was gonna play barbie margot robbie (laughs) oh for sure but after you know after seeing like i tanya i'm like And I've seen her in quite a few other Wolf of Wall Street, some of these other films. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, (laughs) she can act. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So it'll be interesting to see what she does with this role. And, yeah, they kind of picked a perfect choice for Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Pretty boy, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Um, It was either, it'd be like either him or, you know, Ryan Reynolds. I mean... Yeah. yeah. Um. The other choice I could see is uh, Hemsworth. What's his name? Chris. And Liam. Not Chris. Liam. Yeah. Liam. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, he's got a big head. You know, what I'm saying Liam Hemsworth <laughs> has a big head. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, like his head is proportional to his body, but for some reason, Liam Hemsworth has a big head. <laughs> It doesn't help with the whole beard and the extra hair. It yeah, makes it yeah, bigger. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Marvel is looking to make 2022 the year of vengeance. Uh, it's going to be the year of Ghost Rider because in 2022 it'll mark 50 years since the Spirit of Vengeance has been in Marvel Comics. Um. 
Ghost Rider is riding his way into a special anniversary celebration in 2022 in what Marvel is calling a year of vengeance, marking 50 years since his 1972 introduction in Marvel Spotlight number 5, which will apparently kick off with the announcement of a new ongoing title. Created by Gary Friedrich and Mike Plug, the original Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, has since spun off into an entire mythos encompassing numerous incur- incarnations of the so-called Spirit of Vengeance from throughout the past and future of the Marvel Universe. I prefer this. Like, I hate when things are rushed. They're like, oh, you know, it's going to be uh, a big significant event for this superhero. Like, let's quickly put out a movie. Right. That bugs me. But for them to say, like, hey, we're going to do this thing. Um, marking the 50th year, then going forward, we're going to do it. It doesn't feel as rushed. Mm-hmm. Like they're actually going to put some time and some thought into this whole mythos and yeah. going in a completely new direction. Yeah. And I'm excited for a new Ghost Rider title. I've always liked that character. Oh, same. I was uh, cool. Nicholas Cage kind of like turned me away from it. Yeah. For a it was while. A new- no. But when they. Ghost Rider was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a few episodes, and he was really cool. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, yeah, so hopefully they'll do good Do him justice. Character. Yeah. And I want to see an MCU version of Ghost Rider. Oh, same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think we'll get it in this fourth phase? Or is that, like, fifth phase? I don't know if they've mentioned Ghost Rider yet. I know they have the rights back. Right. But I don't know if they've... I don't think they've mentioned it. Hmm. Maybe it'll be Phase 5 thing. As long as it's a little bit more interesting than him just going around snatching souls. Because <laughs> that was right. kind of lame. I'd much rather see him doing some other cool badass things. Yeah. I think it'd be cool, like... Uh, let's do a road trip movie or something with Ghost Rider. You know, let's have him go cross country or, you know... Yeah. Something like that. Uh, kind of a western esque yeah. movie. Yeah, he stops at a small little diner. This woman's being, you know, one of the waitresses is being mistreated, mm-hmm. and then he just beats the shit out of this other yeah. guy, right? Or you know, let's let's start in the past. Let's start with the uh, um, cowboy ghost rider. Let's yeah go forward from there. You know, there's always been a ghost rider. Yeah, you know, through history, yeah. kind of a deal. Yeah, could have. You know, little flashbacks to past Ghost Riders. I think that'd be cool. That he almost channels all of those Ghost Riders into what he is today. Yeah. Like, he remembers their, he remembers their memories. Right, like, they're all, yeah, like, they're all a part of him. Right. Yeah. Just as long as he doesn't give the whole Star Wars line, like, we are Ghost Riders. <laughs> <laughs> I am all the Ghost Riders. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. And that line still haunts me to this day. Because <laughs> I remember sitting in the theater, and when he said, I'm all the Sith, I just thought, oh, please don't say it. Please oh, don't God, say don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> and she goes, and I'm all the Jedi. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> fuck. Way to fuck this movie up. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I am all the Ghost Rider. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, two big powerhouses, Walmart and Netflix, are going to be teaming up. Going forward, you're going to only be able to get exclusive items from some of your favorite Netflix series at Walmart. They call it Wallflix. Yeah, they they should. They huh? should. Yeah, or Martnet. No, that that's weird. Yeah, Wallflix. <laughs> Martnet. Martnet. <laughs> Y'all can go down to Martnet. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Um, some of the exclusive items that they will have are going to be Stranger Things collectible box, which actually looks kind of cool because it's a VHS case mm. uh, alongside a Eleven um, action figure. Okay. Uh, t-shirts. Everything is on. Like all these exclusive Netflix shows are going to have even more exclusive things at Walmart, which I think is pretty damn smart. Squid Game t-shirts. Yes. Um, although I feel like Squid Game was kind of a flash in the pan. Like I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, but it'll, yeah, it'll go down popularity till they release like a Squid Game season two or something and it'll, 
And you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I remember about that show. Same with, like, Netflix and some of these other shows. That I love it because they drop a whole season for yeah. you, but at the same time, then you forget about it pretty right. quickly. It was like The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. Right. First season, everybody, you know, Baby Yoda everywhere died down. Then season two came in, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it was big again. And right. But down. at least they kind of, like prolonged that feeling because you had to wait a week to see an episode mm -hmm. right where you watch one of these other shows everybody's <clears throat> talking about it for the the lion king or what's it not the lion king what the fuck is his name uh the tiger king yeah right you remember it for a couple of days talk about it and then it's gone and it's gone mm -hmm. yeah, yeah well, i was just that, looking at smart yeah i was just looking at some of the stuff that they're gonna have here some Funko Pops. Something that caught my attention, like the Bluetooth cassette player. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, like you said, the Stranger Things collector's box, uh, T-shirts. Uh, the Witcher. The Witcher. You have a Netflix Grunt and Grumble. Um, Geralt or Geralt talking collectible plush. That's interesting. Funko Pop, of course. Ride Deluxe from the Witcher. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 down. I'm in I'm I'm into it. Who do you think like Hulu can team up with? Mm. Shopco. <laughs> Kmart. <laughs> Toys R Us. <laughs> uh like what's another like big uh, Kroger? Um Costco? Costco. Ooh, Hulu and smart. Costco. That'd be smart. Right? Just to kind of keep up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Somebody, they're going to have to do it for yeah. sure to get their name out there. Oh, or even just like Hulu and GameStop, right? Yeah. Something to where they release certain items that you can only find there, on right. there for their shows. No, I'm sure Hulu's looking at this deal going, fuck! Yeah. So, how the hell did they get this one? <laughs> yeah. But it looks like they might even have like a little section of the store that's strictly dedicated to just this. Yeah, it's what it's looking like. Yeah, that's. Like I said that. We know on Netflix. I'm in. I think that'd be cool. It'll be cool to see something like Squid Game season two, then be able to go to Walmart and Pay get away. like a Funko Pop or t shirt or something. Right. Yeah, it'd be cool. I'm for it. Um, all right, let's get to our revs and wrecks. So, um, I was looking for a movie to watch, movie to go see, and I really wanted to see. The Harder They Fall. It's a Western. I really want to see it, but I couldn't make the times work. So instead I saw The Last Duel. Um, and, sorry. So The Last Duel is actually based on... takes place in medieval times. And it's actually based on a true story. There were these two knights back in the day, back in like the 1300s. And their names were Jean de Carouge and Jacques Legree. Bless you. <laughs> and the story is this. Um, Jean de Carouge has a wife. And he has this friend, Jacques Legree. And Jean ends up becoming a knight. But he doesn't have a lot of recognition. Whereas Jacques... Jacques Legree ends up befriending kind of this royalty and he becomes very popular and everybody loves him. And so he ends up kind of falling out with his friend. Well, they end up getting back together and uh, Jacques sees this wife, his wife, and one thing leads to another and he ends up raping her. Damn. But he denies it because of course he does. Right. So the last duel... Uh, makes reference to this was the last duel to the death that was ever sh uh, sanctioned by the king of England. Oh, the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was this one. 
Like I said, it's a real story. Actually happened. I looked it up. Ten paces and all? Uh, well, it, it was swords. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Because, you know, it's the 1300s. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I guess they had crossbows. They could have done that. Yeah. Mm. Throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it stars uh, Matt Damon as Jean de Carouge. And um, uh, I always want to call him Adrian Brody. Adam Driver as Jacques Degree. Uh, it also stars Ben Affleck um, and a bunch of other people you've never heard of. This was actually the first movie that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck wrote together since Goodwill Hunting. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's like 30 years. Yeah. And I and I went in expecting, you know, being this will be fine, you know. I mean, it's Matt Damon, Adam Driver, they're both really good, you know, I'll go check it out. But it's actually I really enjoyed it. Okay. And what I liked about it is you know how other movies display medieval times as this great romantic era and oh there's knights and ladies and blah blah blah. Right. No, it was a shitty time to be alive. <laughs> It was a terrible time. Right, yeah. And that's what they show in this movie. Like, no, this era sucked. Like, people are dying left and right. Yes, plagues exactly. Running there's, around yeah, there's edge. plagues, and it's just terrible. And I like that they showed that. You know, that felt very true to what it was actually like. They didn't make it. They didn't romanticize it. No, not at all. Um, and the performances were really good. Uh, I always forget how good of an actor Adam Driver is till I see him in something. Right. What was the last movie that you saw him in? Probably Star Wars. As <laughs> <laughs> Kylo. Um, same with Matt Damon. Like you always kind of forget how you you always forget about Matt Damon. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've mentioned that before. You kind of sleep on him. Yeah. You kind of sleep on Matt Damon. Then you see him again, you're like, oh, yeah, he's good. Uh, that happened to me with like Ford versus Ferrari, mm -hmm. right? I think I did a uh, For Your Reconsideration. Yeah. Yeah. He's a talented dude. Um, so, yeah. So, the performances are good. Um, it's actually quite topical um, because back in the 1300s, they were saying stuff like, you know, rape can't get you pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and they were victim- Blaming, um, gaslighting, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. The duel to the death was if, if her husband Jacques de Carouge won, then obviously God let him win, and so she must be telling the truth that this actually happened. But if Jacques de Gris won, oh, she was lying apparently. Damn. And so not only was her husband going to die, but she was going to be burned at the stake as wow. a liar. Uh, the stakes just got higher mm -hmm. <laughs> and hotter and hotter <laughs> and how, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, it's like, Oh, these are this medieval time. We don't believe stuff like that. Now well, <laughs> watch Fox news. <laughs> um, what are you talking about? Troy? That's fair and balanced. <laughs> oh, right. 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 Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. <clears throat> But yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I mean, I don't think you need to go to the movie theater to watch it. Right. It's certainly one you can get on Netflix or a Redbox or something. But if you can, if you ever pass by it, I highly recommend it. Out of five um, swords? Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. The sword fighting was a lot more accurate. Because a lot of people think, you know, it's like almost fencing. No, they... They two-handed those swords, and they used them as, like, clubs. And right. Yeah. They two-fisted that. Yes. <laughs> two-fisted their swords. Well, Not they're heavy as hell, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty damn heavy, though. Oh, yeah. Those very suckers. Um, we went to, like, medieval times, or what was it? The Renaissance Fair, I think, yeah. and they'll do those different things, but you can actually like fill, like pick up their swords. Mm -hmm. and you're like, Jesus, like this sucker's heavy. Yeah. It's like fifty pounds. Yeah. And so that was kind of cool. Like it seemed like they're very accurate as far as the fights go. And were they fighting in mud, basically? Yes. Okay. And so it just seemed very historically accurate. So I I appreciated that. So yeah, out of five swords, I'd give it like I'm at like a three. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. 
I don't think a lot of people know that this movie is out. But uh, yeah, if you get a chance, go go check it out. Uh, one of the shows that I binge watched is the sur- third season of You. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is a show about Joe who <sighs> develops crushes on these women and would do anything and everything for them. In this third season, he's found his his one true love. Love is her name. Um, and they end up having a child, Henry. But he kind of falls back into old habits. You know, old habits die hard. Isn't he a serial killer? Yes. This guy, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Dexter-esque. Right, right, okay. Um, I, was, I was trying to think if that was the show I was thinking of. Yeah. So in this season, he is married, but he has kind of a wandering eye, and he starts falling for somebody um, again. But he, if his wife doesn't... Well, his wife doesn't like that kind of shit, and she's doing everything she possibly can, whether it's, like, marital counseling, which is... It's really interesting. When they're going to, like, counseling... Um, they've already murdered a couple of people, mm-hmm. you know, not to give too, too much away, but mm-hmm. like you kind of expect it with this show that they're going to, there's going to be killings for sure. Um, but yeah, they have to word certain stuff and finesse their arguments so they, they don't reveal that they just like killed somebody, right. you know? Um, but they're still having these like very interesting debates and conversations. The other thing that I really thought was interesting is, yeah, he's fallen for somebody else and he's still like trying to stalk her, but he's also got a ball and chain and she will murder anybody that so much look as looks as him and flirts with him. Mm -hmm. So there's that dynamic. And this third season got so damn crazy. Even like a couple episodes in, I think there's like nine or 10, uh, it gets you hooked, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It kind of closed the door, but at the same time, it left it open so they could do a they could easily do a fourth season. Mm. Um, but I have not seen any reports whether they are going to or not. If you really enjoyed Dexter and you don't mind some blood and guts, um, I think you'd enjoy the show. It's okay. it's pretty interesting. Uh, out of five turkeys, uh, I'm going to give this season probably. I'm um, yeah, I think I'm at about a three. Okay, it was it was pretty well done. It I didn't know where they were going to go with this direction because at the end of season two, he's just like, "Hello, neighbor," and yeah, he's already got that wandering eye. Right, right. <laughs> and they purposely moved out of the city, you know, to another remote place in California where they could, like, start a new life and not go down this path. But, you know, they fall back into old habits. Serial killers got to be a serial killer. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I was uh, perusing Redbox the other day because I was actually looking for Pig. In yeah. The movie. Couldn't find it, the one I was at. But what I did find was Injustice. This is uh, another DC animated film. It just came out on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Based off of the... Well, last Tuesday, I guess. Yeah, last Tuesday. Based off the popular video game. And the um, description, or the overview, is this. On an alternate Earth, the Joker tricks Superman into killing Lois Lane, which sends the hero on a path of destruction. Superman decides to take control of Earth, and Batman and his allies must try to stop him. Now, here's the thing. With the Injustice video game, uh, what they did was... That was basically the premise, but Superman pretty much becomes um, the ruler of Earth, essentially. Yeah. And you have to have... Or they had to go find alternate versions of Superman and Batman... To be able to to come help. Yeah. Yeah. The Superman and Batman, we all know... To come help. Well, they didn't get into that in this movie. They went another way with it. A better way? No. Oh. It's not great. Oh. And I know you have it sitting at home right now, ready to watch. Damn it. So maybe you'll have a different perspective take on, on it. Yeah. 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 Like having not played Injustice like at all. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Maybe you like it then. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
But yeah, so I had an issue with that. I also had an issue with the animation. The animation was weird. There was this time back in the late 90s where the cartoons had really dark outlines around them. Right. Remember that, like, uh, that Spider-Man cartoon where he was like in the future or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was really dark and it had was, the it shadows was. really dark. That's how this movie is. Okay. And it's weird. It looks weird. Um, you don't get used to it after a little bit of watching. You do, but at, at the beginning, you're like, this looks really dated. The animation looks really dated. Also, voice acting is not great. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. They didn't get anybody cool. Well, this is the next. cast. Okay. Here's the thing. You know, they actually... It's a solid cast. Um, Justin Hartley, Gillian Jacobs, Anson Mount, uh, Janet Varney, um... Yeah, so, I mean, just those first three. I mean, they're good actors. Um... But I don't, I don't know. I, maybe this movie feels rushed. That's the best way I can put it. It feels rushed. Uh, it like they just released the long Halloween, which I watched, uh, like the part two. I didn't uh, see that. Um, that was pretty. That was pretty decent. But it seemed like pretty quick that they came out with this injustice. I mm -hmm. hadn't heard anything about it at yeah, all. Me and all of a sudden, it's just like boom, it's yeah. there. And. The guy was playing the Joker. I don't remember who he is. Uh, again, not not great. Not the best performance I've ever heard. Uh, Gillian Jacobs plays Harley Quinn. Um, uh, it's just all around. I mean, it was just it was okay, and that's the thing. And for these DC animated films, I expect more than just okay. Absolutely, you know? yeah. This is their bread and butter. Yeah. They're kind of hit or miss with their live action movies, but these ones are supposed to be solid. Mm -hmm. Just seems like they kind of missed the mark with this one. But like I said, maybe you'll have another take on it. But for okay. me, out of five, um, out of five bombs, atom bombs. Mm hmm. I'm at like a one and a half. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just after I was done with it, I was just like, oh, well, that was okay, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I'd rather actually just go back and replay the game. But... Fair enough. Uh, one final review. Yes. I finished up the story mode. On call a couple of weeks ago, but I've been meaning to get to it. Uh, call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Yes. Um, the, well, it comes out. Well, this takes place in the 50s during the Cold War. Right. And you're going around as a spy. And it was awesome. It had like elements of um, Hitman game franchise. And there's a lot of stealth involved, but there's also. Plenty of missions where you're just running and gunning and shooting people left and right. Okay. Um, they enlist your help to kind of like you are a former uh, S Soviet, um, but they've enlisted your help. And it's kind of cool because you're also able to put in your name. So you felt more invested with this character. It was, it said Alex Warner or Alex Bell Warner, you mm -hmm. know, and so they called you Bell constantly. So I was running around like oh, shooting gotcha. people. Gotcha. Um, they're like, hey, Bell, get over here, kind of a deal. But then, like, all of the files that they'd show, it all had your name up on it on oh, the screen, cool. um, which I appreciated. I also liked certain missions um, where you had objectives, where you had to run over here and stealthily take out these other guys and hide their bodies, and um, other ones where you're running. Um, there was one that was probably my favorite, and it was towards the end. They're trying to get you to remember, um, some information that's kind of key to figuring out where this dude, is, this, um, Soviet is hiding. Mm -hmm. So they jab you in the eye with a needle, 
and oh. inject you with some serum. And it's like, you see the needle coming see towards it? your eye, towards the screen. I'm just like, uh, I'm like <laughs> kind of squinting. Um, but yeah, they jab you in the eye and then you get a flashback and they say, hey, there was one part where you were in this like guerrilla warfare and you were, um, I remember you telling me this, that you had to run here with this gun and you had like this, this weapon and you had to stealthily take out all these guys. And he's like, no, 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 wait, hold up. And then you go reverse, go back to the beginning. I believe you had a rocket launcher. And you like you went here and then you like you went down this path to the left. Yeah. And so they keep reliving this history and you're having to replay it over and over in your mind. And then all of a sudden you get to this red door and he's just like, yeah, there was this red door. What was at the end of the hallway? Like you need to be able to tell us this information. So you're chasing after this door and all of a sudden you drop down and then like you're running forward and then you turn around the doors behind you and like, it's fucking bizarre. It felt like something straight out of like silent Hill kind of like wow, it that doesn't sound like call of duty no not at all and that's why i loved it so much is because there was like so many different like elements to this game that i'm like sure. i became way more invested in this characters and also it's very cool because at the very tail end you can actually i'll tell you off you know off recording um but there's three different alternate like alternative directions that you can go with it you know yeah. like you can kind of choose what what's going to happen and how the story is going to end it was also really neat to see some of these other guys that i've seen some from some of the other like i know most people play uh call of duty black ops you know they'll play these games for either zombies or they'll play it for the multiplayer mm -hmm. uh i seriously just play it for the campaign <laughs> like uh this one took me about 20 plus hours to uh complete everything um i also appreciated that you had to like pick all these certain locks and then you could also go in and type in the computers um you could it felt kind of stealthy um but also there's a lot of running and gunning mm. so nice. you get the best of both worlds okay um yeah Overall, I would say for this story, out of five bullets, um, I, this was probably one of my more like one of my more favorites out of the bunch. I would say four. I'm at four bullets. Okay, nice. Uh, if you get a chance, you'll have to check it out. Like if you already love the multiplayer, like or you already are playing the multiplayer, uh, then give this a shot. Give the story mode a chance. It's worth it. Okay, there you go. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today, kids. Uh, jump on over, as we do as well, to our DLC right after. Yes. Um, we have one story we didn't get to this week we're going to throw on there. Uh, plus, we're going to talk about how we would make um, a ha the new Halloween film. Or at least what we would improve or whatever. Yeah. So, here's where you can find us. You can listen to all of our episodes and hear all of our DLCs over on patreon.com slash worldwarg. Thanks, Sean. Yes. Big shout out to our newest patron. Our newest patron, our good buddy Sean Ray. Uh, go check him out over at uh, Cosmic Potato. Pretty much our sister show. Um... <clears throat> and you can listen to just our episodes if you want at worldwarg.podbean.com or wherever podcasts are available. We're everywhere. Uh, on the social media, you can find us at facebook.com slash worldwargpodcast. We're also on Instagram and TikTok. Just search worldwarg. Um, you can find our merchandise at tpublic.com or just put in worldwarg and hit shopping. And our stuff will come up. Uh, you can also email us anytime, day or night, at worldwgpodcast at gmail dot com. So this has been World War G. I, I did that off the top of my head, by the way. Damn, that's impressive. I thought you were reading that for sure. No. Oh wow. What the top of my head? Huh? So this has been World War G. That has been AJ. That has been Troy. Stay geeky, my friends. And, um, uh... Be safe out there. Sure. Don't point any prop guns at anybody. Don't want to pull Alec Baldwin. 
That's what it's going to be called now. <laughs> pulling an Alec Baldwin? Pulling, a, pulling, a, pulling the Baldwin. 